This week on Maker Update, touching the wobble sphere, cheating at beer pong, internet controlled bubbles, and sizing a barrel jack. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, the show that exists to remind you that there's still clever people out in the world doing cool and interesting things. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining me here again, and let's get started with the project of the week. Robin Baumgarten is the legendary game designer who created Line Wobbler and later Wobble Garden and Quantum Garden. His latest creation is called Wobble Sphere, and you can find more information on it on his site, wobblylabs.com. This is a geodesic ball of printed circuit boards that are all wired together and connect up to a Teensy 4.0 microcontroller, which gets instructions from a computer over USB. Each of the 60 hexagon sections of the design include an addressable LED ring and a door stopper spring wired up to respond to touch. Add them up and you have 1,152 LEDs and 72 springs. Aside from being eye candy and looking like a COVID disco ball, the Wobble Sphere currently includes three interactive visualizations, Cellular Automata, Bee Garden, and Freestyle Mode. As a technical achievement, it's cool to see what Robin's doing here to maximize the performance of his LED animations. There's an LED library made for the Teensy that he links to. It pushes most of the processing to the board and gets his animations up to a ridiculous 150 frames per second. It looks incredible. There's a certain poetic tragedy to the fact that it looks like a COVID virus but uses human touch for interaction. Maybe you can just make one for your own pod to enjoy. Now for some news, the XPRIZE Foundation is offering up a million dollars in prize money for a new protective face mask design. They're calling it the Next Gen Mask Challenge, and that's partly because they're limiting the competition to just people age 15 to 24. As someone in their 40s, I feel a little bummed about being left out. That said, I can appreciate that part of the hope here is to create cool looking, comfortable designs that people will wear. If you fit the age range and you're inspired to contribute ideas, I say give it a shot. Now for more projects, on Instructables, Grant Galloway shows you how to make the Pongmate Cyber Cannon Mark III. This is a wrist-mounted, motorized ping pong ball launcher. It's an Arduino-based system with two main parts. The first part is the motorized launcher, which feeds ping pong balls through a PVC pipe out to a pair of foam wheels that launch the ball out at the desired speed. The second part of the system calculates the speed and angle using a laser sight, a time of flight sensor, and accelerometer. A strip of LEDs provides feedback on your arm's position, and so you've got just the right angle, then you're ready to launch. For another project that uses PVC pipe and beer, check out this hidden underground drink cooler by Well Done Tips. This one is really an exploration of what can be done with just PVC pipe, end caps, and some plywood. One of the coolest tricks here is how he shrinks the diameter of the inner pipe by slicing one side of it lengthwise, cinching it together with some hose clamps, and then hitting the pipe with a heat gun and allowing it to cool. The part where you have to dig a three foot hole in your yard without disrupting the grass around it, that doesn't sound like fun, but the payoff of having this sneaky backyard stash that you can show off someday might be worth it. Until then, why not invite people over virtually to make some bubbles? 8 Bits and a Byte have this guide on making an internet connected bubble machine using a Raspberry Pi and the Remo TV platform. All you need for this one is a Pi, a 5 volt relay board, a Pi camera, and some kind of bubble machine. The Pi is just switching the power to the bubble machine and then displaying the results with the live camera feed. The magic is really the Remo TV configuration of the Pi, which allows other users online to see your video feed and trigger the bubble machine remotely using an on screen button. Someone from halfway around the world could be blowing bubbles in your backyard while you're pulling a drink from your secret cooler and shooting ping pong balls with your laser gauntlet. This is the future I've been waiting for. Finally, you'll need a place to set down your drink. On YouTube, Laura Comp shows how she made this all wood folding table. I say all wood because there's no hardware involved aside from these magnetic latches, which are optional. There's plenty of gluing and clamping, but everything else even the hinges for the folding legs are made from wood. Now for some tips and tools. Adam Savage wants to remind us that this is no time to get an eye injury. Be sure to protect your peepers with some goggles. Adam's recommendation are these fully enclosed goggles by DeWalt. I have a pair of these too and they're great, especially if you need them to fit over glasses. However, I do find that if it's warm out, they fog up after a few minutes. 
for what it's worth, my favorites, which I just reordered so that I could have a fresh pair, are these ones made by 3M. They're called the Virtua CCS. They're super light. They have this foam gasket around the side that keeps stuff from sneaking in. My favorite feature though is that you can hook in these corded earplugs, which are sold separately. Hearing safety gets overlooked a lot, and I find that by having earplugs basically built into my glasses, it's no effort for me to protect my ears. You can find links to everything down in the description. For another cool tool, check out my interview with Matt Stoltz talking about his favorite Leatherman multi-tool, the Free P4. What's extra cool about this one is that it uses a magnetic latch that you can pop open one-handed. This way, if you're holding on to the thing that you're working on with one hand, you can grab and open this thing with the other without taking your hands off your work. On the iFixit channel, I got a kick out of their recent teardown of the Amazon Echo Frames. These are a new wearable Alexa device from Amazon. I don't understand the appeal, but I love seeing how they're able to cram the guts of an Echo plus a battery pack into a pair of glasses. Eric Strebel has a video up on advanced techniques for casting parts from silicone molds. You may have seen Eric's video on the subject before. This time though, he shows how he's able to laser cut wood to create a custom platform for his part. This gives him a perfect fit with very little waste. And in case you missed it, since this is the first week of the month, we also have the Adafruit edition of Maker Update over on the Adafruit channel. Tyler Weingarner shares all the latest projects and news from the Adafruit crew, including a Bluetooth key tracker and a 3D printed pixel chase game from the Ruiz brothers. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they have a great video from a few years back on how to figure out the diameter of a barrel jack connection. Sometimes you come across a connector out there with a common outer diameter, but an unusual inner diameter. Those inner dimensions can be almost impossible to gauge with calipers, but with a few common household items like a toothpick or a ballpoint pen or a multimeter probe, you can find substitutions that you can easily measure and test fit. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.